The next autoimmune disease that we are going to talk about is escalator edema, and this is autoimmune tissue damage with activation of fibroblasts and deposition of collagen under the skin. So escleroderma is a formation or thickening of this um, part of the skin. It has two types, diffuse or localized. When we are talking about diffuse, well, this is diffuse and the skin is diffusely um, affected. Also, in diffuse type, we have visceral involvement, early visceral involvement, in fact. And we have commonly esophagus, which is affected um, and which w w which then results in um, dysphagia. Now, when we are talking about localized scleroderma, we are talking about local skin and late visceral involvement. Uh, here we develop crest syndrome and each of the letter of this word is a standing for one of the uh, presentation of this disease. So we have calcinosis and anti-centromer antibodies. We also have rayon phenomenon, esophageal dysmotility, and sclerodactyl and um, telangiotaxis of the skin, which is basically dilatation of the of the superficial vasculature of the skin. Now, you may ask why esophageal dysmotility is happening, and that's because the Peristalsis is impaired in the case of um, scleroderma uh, in patients with localized or diffuse scleroderma, which leads to difficulty swallowing food. Now, the next autoimmune disorder that we are going to talk about is rheumatoid arthritis. Here, this is more of a chronic inflammatory disease which uh, affects joints but may also involve extra articular um, tissues. And in these patients, um, one of the findings is that rheumatoid factor or IgM antibodies against the FC portion of the IgG in 70% of patients. Symptoms that um, they present with is initially malaise, fatigue, and generalized musculoskeletal pain, which then develops to joint involvement. The joint involvement is symmetrical, and the small joints are affected first before the large ones, and it's a non-superative proliferative arthritis. And definition of arthritis is warmth, swelling and tenderness in the joints, usually bilaterally and most commonly in hands. Here we can see different stages of the disease. The first stage is earliest stage. Here we can see on the pathological finding synovial tissue being vascularized and the new vessels formation in the earliest stage of the disease. In established stage of the disease, um, here we can see lymphocyte infiltration, which then leads to destruction of the synovial tissue. And in later stage, we have synovial hypertrophy, which then causes these malformation of the joints or, or destruction of the joints tissue.